everyone. Hope you're having a good night. I am here with the hospice story of Todd, and he was patient of Bonnie Tingley. The Lord works in mysterious ways. It's making my nose look crooked. <sighs> Can never get that on right. Todd was a three day old newborn baby with dark straight hair and beautiful blue eyes. His collar was dusky, unlike the normal pink collaring you would expect in a newborn. It was the first telltale sign of his heart problem. The doctor quickly discovered that Todd had a hypoplastic heart. A hypoplastic heart is one in which the two lower chambers of the heart fell to form, which left Todd with a weak heart that simply could not continue to beat much longer. His mom, Mary, and his dad, Jim, had decided to take him home where they felt they could give him the tenderest, loving care possible. They were determined to do all they could for their little one, even though this would be a short and bittersweet experience for them. Their pediatrician had done a wonderful job preparing both Mary and Jim for what they could expect from a medical standpoint. Emotionally and spiritually, these decisions would be between them, their baby, and God. When we spoke about how long Todd might live, the doctors told us maybe two weeks. I had to admit to myself that this was going to be a challenging situation, most especially for this loving family, and then for me personally as the mother of young children myself. The first order of business was to assist the family in settling into their new roles as parents and caregivers of a terminally ill baby. On their first day home, everyone was more than weary. Mary and Jim had processed a great deal of information all at once and were feeling overwhelmed. But even in such difficult circumstances, they were determined to make everything as peaceful and happy as possible. This was a strong, committed couple, and they shared with me their prayers for little Todd and for themselves. I must admit it was heart-wrenching to see them lovingly care for and tend to his every need. Nurses are supposed to remain somewhat detached in caring for patients and their families, but there are times when that is not possible, and this was surely one of them. That's what they taught us in the nursing home, too, that we was never to get emotionally attached to our patients, but I couldn't do that. It's very, very hard not to. It really is. I don't know how anybody cannot, because I, I could not. Time was moving quickly, and if the doctor was right, they had only about two weeks to enjoy their baby and build lasting memories to cherish for their future. I wanted to help them make the most of the short time left with this precious child. Jim was a problem solver and wanted to be able to handle and resolve every new challenge as circumstances with their baby changed. He did it all extraordinarily well. Jim's business had given him whatever time off he and his family needed which made this time even more sacred and special. God surrounds us with himself in the hearts and faces of those he puts on this journey with us. We are never alone. Always remember that. We are never alone. I returned the next day to check on the baby and his family to see how their first night went. Todd seemed to be developing colic. That's when they cry all the time and won't stop. And when he cried, his mother worried even more because the crying was faint and really exhausted him. He had a weak in his heart, probably. I thought of my own two babies who had difficult times with colic and how unfair this added problem seemed to be for this little one. This precious family, in my opinion, had enough difficult circumstances to handle without dealing with the pain of colic. Colic is horrible. But as with many circumstances in life, this one was not under our control. 
I knew, and so did this young couple, that God had the ultimate answer to everything, and we had to trust Him. We prayed hard about each new challenge as it arose and trusted God to pave the way before us, making it smooth. Mary had obtained some medication for the colic from her doctor, but she did not feel it was helping very much. She and Jim wanted above all else for Todd to be peaceful. I asked Mary to call me later in the afternoon if the colic started again, and I suggested she try the medication then closer to his feeding time. When I made a call later that day to check on Todd, I was surprised to hear her say, I found a different solution that is working much better than the medication. It seems that just as the colic started up, Jim had decided to help Mary by cleaning up a bit around the house, and he began to run the vacuum cleaner. The sound of the vacuum cleaner seemed to soothe Todd, and he stopped crying immediately whenever he heard it. Ain't that weird? Mary said every time Jim turned off the vacuum, Todd would begin to cry again. I know car rides will usually make them stop crying and they'll fall asleep too. But as soon as you stop that car, oh, nine times out of 10, they're gonna wake up and start crying again. Mary said every time Jim turned off the vacuum, Todd would begin to cry again. But when Jim started it, the crying would stop. A vacuum cleaner turned out to be both a solution and a strange answer to prayer. Many of my visits were made with the vacuum cleaner running, but it was music to everyone's ears. The young couple called it a real blessing, the one that none of us would have come up with. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have with on our own. Todd was unable to cry as the time left for him to draw closer to God. He became weaker and weaker. The soothing sound of the vacuum cleaner allowed him the restful sleep he was in much need of. Who but God alone would have come up with such an answer? It is in times like these when you realize that God is tapping you on the shoulder and saying, it is I. You need to look no further than the still small voice God uses to speak to us all the time. Peter asked the master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. John 6, 68, remember that? Scripture is alive to us in all the challenges of our daily lives. This is why we call it the living Bible. It is presenting God's word and direction to us in every expanding and enlightened way. Mary and Jim spent more and more time just loving and holding Todd now. He seemed to need less food and more cuddling, cradling him in their arms, rocking him, singing to him, and just loving him is the way they spent their last days with him. Family prayers centered on asking Jesus to take this little one home to heaven peacefully and gently where he would be made whole. Todd died in a little over two weeks, just as the doctor had said. The colic turned out to be the biggest obstacle, threatening their resolve to giving loving care to their little son and enable him to have a gentle death. What a strange turn of events to find a vacuum cleaner as the source of a blessing. Mary and Jim had deep faith and were able to trust the Lord to give them the strength and know-how they needed to care for their son. Although the time given to them to love Todd was short, their memories of him will last for a lifetime. The Lord certainly works in mysterious ways and they will be with him again one day. They have, they have strong faith, so they know that God's watching their child. God has their child in his arms, and he's taking care of them until they're back home with him too, and they'll be reunited again, and their son will be healthy. And how happier could you be and love than to be in the arms of Jesus? The 
baby is not hurting anymore. He's in paradise and happy and healthy and just waiting patiently for his parents to get there. He's watching over them. I'm so glad they had great faith. This was a good story. I hope you guys enjoyed the story of Todd. Good night, guys.